No more wasting time. Here's every Desmos hack for the SAT. First up, we've got good old fashioned systems of equations. This is one of the best things Desmos can do. You just plug in both of your equations and your solution is going to be where they touch. And not only can you see it, but they're gonna create a little point for you. And we know that our solution is two, just like that. If you're not sure how to factor or do whatever else it takes to solve an equivalent expressions question, you can plug that into Desmos as well. First, plug in the initial expression, then plug in your answer choices, and you're looking for one that overlaps the graph that was made from the initial expression. So if we put in choice A, you're gonna see these graphs do not overlap, but as you go down the line, you'll eventually get one that overlaps, looking a little something like this. You can also use Desmos for single variable equations. That would be when you only have one variable, usually X. And while you could plug this in exactly as is, you're gonna end up with vertical lines. You actually have to zoom in to kind of see what's going on. So this would be five. Whereas if you put Y equals each side of the equation, then it gives you a system of equations and you can just find the point and it's gonna highlight that point for you, which is a lot easier. Just make sure that you ignore Y since you're solving for X. And again, we get five. You can also use Desmos to evaluate functions. And to do this, we actually do wanna put in the actual functions. And then here's where the magic happens. It asks us the value of this. <laughs> so we're gonna type in this straight up. And look at that, it gives us the answer and Little bonus tip here, we don't like this decimal, we have a bunch of fractions as answers. This little button right here converts into a simplified fraction. So we know our answer after I fix this <laughs> is going to be 220 over 81, choice D here. And while we're hanging out, you could also translate functions in the same way. So let's pretend we just had, I don't know, this R of X here and we wanted to figure out what's R of X minus three. Well, just put R of X minus three and it'll create that graph for you. We could also figure out what's R of X plus, I don't know, 14 minus three. It'll create that graph for you. So you can also translate functions just like that. Next up, we've got tables and linear regression. If you are given a table, you can easily put that into Desmos by writing the word table and then putting in your X's and Y's. When you do this, a little guy's gonna pop up over here and you could add a linear regression, which not only graphs the line of the table for you, but also gives you the equation. So we know this is y equals 5x plus 5. We match that up with ax plus b, then a equals 5 and b equals 5. So then a plus b is going to be 10. You can use Desmos to solve a number of constants-based questions. Definitely a system of equations where you only have one constant, you can use Desmos. You are, of course, going to plug in both equations. When you put K in, whatever your constant is, in this case, K, add the slider. If it doesn't show up for some reason, you can go on another line and just say K equals and then put in any old number. And then put in your other equation. And since we want one solution, we need to plug in our answer choices for K. And then visually, we will see when there's only one solution. So if we put in 28, you can see that we have two solutions still. 30 doesn't work. 31 is looking like we only have one solution. Zoom in there and yeah, sure enough, boom. Only one solution right there. So just remember, you gotta use that slider. Now this is just one type of constant question. There are a number of constants questions that you don't wanna use Desmos with. Make sure to watch my constants video to learn about those. Desmos will easily show us number of solutions questions. You just put in your system of equations and remember that a solution is wherever they cross and touch each other. We have one point here and we have one point here. So that's two solutions. We can also see maximum and minimum as long as we know what it is. These terms are going to be used for quadratic functions. So we plug in our function and with these, if we're not evaluating functions, you could always just change your uh, H of X or F of X or whatever into Y, which I'll do here. And then a minimum or a maximum is going to be the Y value of the vertex, because as you can see, it's never gonna go below this point. So this is the minimum Y value, in this case, three. If it were an upside down parabola, then instead we would have a maximum, right? It would never go above 67. So that's minimum and maximum. Desmos also works for inequalities. 
As usual, we plug in our inequality and we just have to remember that with inequalities, anything that is shaded is going to be a solution. A dotted line means the line itself is not a solution. And you kind of just go from there. So it's asking which of the following pairs satisfies the equation. You can eyeball it or you could type them in. So I'm gonna put in all three of those. And as we can see, the, the blue one and the purple one work. Two one is right on the dotted line. So two one does not work. So it'd be one and three only. We can also easily find intercepts. Again, this is a visual thing. So we put in our function or we can put Y instead of H of X here. And it's asking about the X intercept. So we just go to the X axis and it will point out the X intercept to us, which is three zero. If we were looking for the Y intercept, we would just look for where it touches the Y axis. And, and again, it'll just point it out to us. So that would be zero negative nine. Desmos can also be used for circle-based equations. This is especially helpful if you don't know the circle equation or if the circle equation is not written the way you're used to. As usual, we just plug the equation in. And here we can see a number of things. What's helpful is they're always gonna give us the top and the bottom of the circle. And we can use that to find either the center or the radius or the diameter. Here, they're asking for the center of the circle. And an easy way to do that would be to just look and see, well, we're at four, we're at negative two. The average of those numbers is gonna be the exact center, right? So it'd just be four, one. But if you're not comfortable with that, or if they give you more challenging numbers, you can use another Desmos hack, which is finding the midpoint of two points. Just type in the word midpoint, parentheses, and then each point will have its own parentheses. That top point was four, four, comma between them. And then you put your other point, which was four, negative two, and boom, it gives you the midpoint, four, one, just like that. You could also label it if you'd like. You can also use Desmos for distance instead of the distance formula. So let's say I wanted to figure out the distance between this uh, y-intercept and the center of the circle here. I could just put in distance. And then just like with mean, we're going to put our two points. So we have five, eight, Make sure to put a comma. And then what was that? Uh, zero, 10. And just like that, it's gonna put in the distance for us, which is fantastic. If we're trying to figure out the mean or median of a set of numbers, we could also do that by putting in the word mean or median. And just like that, it will pull those up for us in case you don't know how to do it. Another cool feature is if you're just plugging in a value for X, so let's say we had, I don't know, Y equals 3X squared plus 2X minus 5, and it gives us an input for X, we could say, like, let's say they told us X equals 8. We could say X equals 8, and then try to figure out where they intersect. You can see you're going to have to do some zooming. It's going to be a bit annoying. Or you could just say, with x equals eight and it'll actually give you the value right there on the same line so the word with is really powerful if you're just plugging something in for x and then of course the last thing you can do is create a boat sailing to a sandcastle with a day and night cycle and this is not something you'll be doing on the sat now if you're looking for more examples and some actual practice using these desmos hacks this video right here is going to go way more in depth if you have the time to watch it i definitely recommend it